Good afternoon and welcome to this webinar from Telric India. Uh, this is a series of webinars we do almost every month, uh, every Thursday, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. India Standard Time, and then we try to bring you uh, the coolest and the greatest and the latest uh, controls or uh, you know features in our controls or you know the suites that we have. Uh, we try to bring that knowledge to you through these webinars, and also we try to focus on what is the industry, uh, you know, uh, hottest thing in the industry and then we try to bring that too. So today we're going to be looking at a very cool feature that we released as part of Kendo UI uh, suite, the HTML5 product suite that we have. And uh, this was released uh, in the Q3 2014, that is the last release of last year, that is 2014. Uh, we release three times a year, Q1, Q2 and Q3. And in Q3 2014, we introduced the concept of uh, export one of the most widely asked for features in Kendo UI was the ability to export data to Excel or PDF out of the box. You know, instead of we writing anything, the the framework should do it. So that I'm happy to say that is available through Q3 2014 of Kendo UI, and that's why you know today's webinar is titled as "Export Data with Ease Using Kendo UI." Uh, if you have been a regular, you would know who is the uh, you know person behind the mic. Uh, this is me. That's how I look. My name is Lohit Gian. I work as a technical evangelist for Telerik in India, and I'm also a Microsoft MVP in the area of ASP.NET and IAS. That's my official email ID. I'm available at Twitter as uh, the handle says here at the red Kashyapa, and then those are my personal blog kashyapas.com and then tellerichelper.net is a blog that is completely dedicated to uh, how to work with something in Telerik uh, framework so myself and my colleagues we keep writing a lot of articles here uh, so www.tellerik.com is another uh, website that you should bookmark that's a global you know website so that's about me um, so today's agenda is fairly simple. You know, I'm, I just put a three-point agenda for today. What is Kendo UI? If uh, somebody, if you, some of you are here in this webinar and then have never heard of Kendo UI, uh, I just want to take uh, maybe five or ten minutes to bring you up to date with what exactly is Kendo UI, what, what is Kendo UI, and then how do you use it or why do you use it? You know, those kind of. We'll try to touch upon those aspects in maybe ten minutes or so, and then we'll, we're going to look at. Using Kendo UI, how do you do an Excel export? How do you do a PDF export? Okay, so having said that, so let's get started uh, with what is Kendo UI. Well, that's the uh, you know mascot, or uh, he's known as Kendoka, or you know that's the uh, kind of a mascot for Kendo UI. And this is by Telerik. Kendo UI is the product name or the marketing name for our HTML5 based uh, offering. So basically, it's a fast, light, and complete uh, HTML5 based JavaScript client side UI framework. Well, it's a mouthful, but yeah, I know. But you just have to go by the wordings here. It's a HTML5 based client side JavaScript UI framework. You know, uh, it has 70 plus jQuery based UI widgets, and it's all available in one tool set. You don't need any other tool set. You know, you have JavaScript framework. So this is basically uh, it's a JavaScript framework agnostic. So you, there's no lock in that if you uh, use this, that's it. You have to be here. So we we integrate with Angular. We integrate with Bootstrap. Uh, we also have extensive data visualization support in the in in uh, with respect to like you know the gauges, the charts, the pie charts, the donuts. You know, you name it, we have it. And also mobile specific widgets. Uh, we also have tooling for mobile uh, hybrid mobile applications. We provide touch support when it comes to mobile specific widgets, and also some of our controls are adaptive in nature. Meaning, if you take a Kendo UI grid and then put it on a desktop browser, it's going to use the complete width of the browser. But if the same uh, grid is taken and then put on a mobile browser, he, he's going to automatically adapt himself to that particular uh, you know form factor and then start doing some magics for you. You do not do anything in, in terms of the coding, but rather you just tell the grid that, hey, you may be running inside a mobile browser, so just be aware. And that's it. And then we do uh, all the other things for you. And then you just put the grid out there and then give the data. That's it. So basically, Kenda UI is the modern comprehensive HTML5 and JavaScript framework that you can find out there in the market. So why Kenda UI? That's because it's one neat package where you find everything, right? So what's in the box? It's basically different. These are the different parts of the Kendo UI, as, I, as we like to call it. So you get application framework. You get web UI, meaning the widgets for the web. 
you get mobile UI, meaning the widgets for the mobile, and also you get data visualization widgets like uh, charts, graphs, and all those things. So this is basically what you get in a box. Like you know, uh, typically this is how we call it. Like what's in the box? So this is what you get when you buy Kindle UI. So web UI, so there are 30 widgets and then we keep on adding lot many controls over the releases. So currently we are at 30 widgets. So these are starting from a simple autocomplete to as complex as a scheduler, as a Gantt chart. You name it, it's everything available as part of the uh, package. Coming to the mobile UI, this contains a complete application tool set for building the hybrid and mobile web application. You want to build a hybrid mobile application or you want to build a mobile web application, well Kindle UI Mobile uh, can help you out with that. So as you can see, simplest action sheet to uh, as complex as a mobile view, list view or you know, you name it, so everything is available here. Coming to the data visualization, which is nothing but the charts or graphs or you know other visuals for visualization. Uh, as you can see on the uh, slide, we have starting from area charts to you name it, so radar, waterfall, uh, QR code generations, you name it, we have it as part of our uh, Kendo UI. So as I said, from a starting from a simple autocomplete widget to a very complex Kendo UI scheduler. So I see like there is a lag. Uh, you know, coming over to you, uh, you guys. So I'm going to be very cautious about that. So you saw that you know I showcased uh, autocomplete. That's as simple as a, a simple widget you can get. And then we also have something called a scheduler. This is complete HTML5 scheduler that you get. Plus, you also we also have these web essentials. You know, we try to call it as. Of course, this is not the web essentials that Matt Christensen wrote uh, for Visual Studio, but rather this is the essential controls for any web application and nobody can beat the grid, right? So we have a Kendo UI grid which is completely responsive, which is completely adaptive uh, in nature. Plus we also have the Kendo UI mobile as I've been saying, so this is basically um, works cross-platform, meaning if you take Kendo UI mobile and then build a hybrid mobile application, rest assured it's going to run on Android, it's going to run on iOS, it's going to run on uh, Windows Phone and then the controls, the uh, mobile controls that we give you are adaptive renderer, uh, rendering in, uh, you know, in behavior, meaning uh, you do not have to worry about the UI. They take the UI of Android or iOS or Windows Phone depending on where they have been deployed and then that's why we call it as cross-platform adaptive rendering uh, in a control set. Yes, uh, there's a question, will uh, Kendo UI Mobile support BlackBerry? Well, we do support BlackBerry but I don't know if you still want to go with BlackBerry. Uh, that's a different question, but there, as you can see, this is Kendo UI mobile um, example, and what you see here is a kind of a mimic of a, a mailbox, and then if you click on that reply button, this is the action sheet that iOS shows, and the same action sheet can be different for different guys. And coming to the data visualization, um, you know, this is just a simple donut chart that we have, and uh, starting from donut to anything that will give you, and what interests me as a uh, web developer, well I've been a web developer for the last 14 years, you know, I started out way back in 2001, so whatever I showed you till now, the control set, they don't excite me at all, you know, of course everybody will have the control, but what excites me is the application framework that we give you as part of the Kendo UI, these are the, build, the building blocks of Kendo UI, JavaScript data source, very powerful uh, data source object that we have and I love, simply love working with this data source because I do not have to do the heavy lifting of going, invoking the service, getting the data, converting into uh, an array. All I do is instantiate the data source and say, hey, when you want to read the data, here is the URL, just go read. And I just go and then call a function like read or a fetch and then everything is done by data source. Also, we give you the single page application framework. One of the most interesting aspects of web application today is a single page application framework. Uh, wherein you know literally you have only one single page and then every other aspects of your screen is uh, on the fly constructed uh, using a template go get the data bind the data and then get the uh, template running and then on the screen so we give you the routing we give you the layouts we give you the views you name it we also have globalization we also have a templating engine we provide you the MEVM data binding out of the box we also give you HTML5 validators uh, for your forms we also give you effects like um, you know uh, fade in, fade out. So uh, very uh, you know whatever effects that you need day-to-day -day, uh, you know application needs, we have it. We also provide drag and drop support as part of the framework. And biggest of the thing is if you want to go Angular, we have a complete Angular JS integration out of the box. You just take Kendo UI 
put Angular and then Kendo and that's it. You have Angular uh, JS integration. We have Kendo Angular directives available. And out of the box, we are Bootstrap friendly because, uh, you know, mind you, Bootstrap is used for layouting uh, uh, techniques uh, and then we didn't want to reinvent anything new. So we do not have a layouting uh, a framework, but rather we rely on, you know, we just tell you to use Bootstrap. So you put Bootstrap and then put our controls. Our controls are responsive in nature. So you do not have to code separately for our controls to be responsive. And because of the uh, lot, everybody has been going open source. So how can we stay behind? So we love open source. And we have a variant of Kendo UI and it is called Kendo UI Core and it is available on GitHub. You can use it or fork it. So you just go to go and then search for Kendo UI Core on GitHub and then what you get, you get application framework, web UI and mobile UI and it's completely free. Having said that it is free, not every control of web UI is available under the web UI in Kendo UI Core. Only uh, 30 uh, uh, or 15 to 20 controls out of the web UI is available. Uh, all advanced widgets like uh, grid, scheduler, um, you know, uh, Gantt, uh, all those things. And then uh, data visualization uh, piece of Kendo UI is not available as part of the core. But believe me, I've been playing around with our core uh, framework and then it is much more sufficient to build a complete HTML5 website or an app using just the core. Uh, if you are an enterprise and you need Kendo UI, the grades, the everything, so that's where we have the professional, so that is for the enterprise apps, uh, grid, pivot grid, barcode, scheduler, uh, the editor, the gauge diagram map, data visualization. So these are all feature rich with consistent API. If you need that, you got to go with you know, your professional, which is a paid product. And also, if you are a server side guy, meaning, you know, I, I'm, I develop a lot of ESP.NET MVC or a PHP or a JSP, I do not want to write JavaScript by hand. So is there something available? Yes, we give you wrapper so you can write JavaScript by hand. So is there something available? Yes, we give you wrappers for your server side. What these wrappers do is they wrap or wrap all the JavaScript for you. You just write it in C sharp or a PHP or a JSP and they spit out the necessary JavaScript for you. So you do not write JavaScript by hand, but rather use your server side technology skills and let the wrapper do uh, the rest of the things for you. So this is the AngularJS integration. We have directives to render the Kendo UI widgets. As you can see here uh, on the top, I have the jQuery, I have the Angular, and then I have Kendo references. And then you just say ng app, uh, Kendo demo, and then you create a ng controller. And then notice what is happening. I'm saying input, and then I say Kendo-auto-complete. And then that, that's nothing but I'm saying like, hey, convert this input into a Kendo autocomplete control. And then what is the model? The model name is product. Uh, what's the data source for this uh, autocomplete? It's uh, something known as product names. If you look at my controller, the controller has an array called product names, and I just put up three uh, items into that. When the page is rendered, that input will be converted into a Kendo autocomplete. So that's as easy as it can get uh, with an Angular JS integration. And uh, coming to the uh, mobile, so you can use your web skills to make mobile apps. Uh, Kendo UI mobile, you can build hybrid R mobile web apps, completely open source and free. Bower install to any project, has Angular directives to render, and then it is totally cross-platform. Of course, the hybrid mobile apps, uh, these are Kendo UI mobile powered. Uh, if you want, we have a paid product called a Stellaric App Builder. Using this, you can, it's an IDE to uh, build hybrid mobile apps. It lets you code, it lets you simulate, it lets you build uh, all in one IDE for uh, this one, the hybrid mobile apps. You can use Cordova plugins for native API, and then of course, respective app store presence is possible through the you know, Kendo UI mobile. So, it's basically a complete application tool set for building hybrid and mobile web application. You know, these are the widgets available as part of the web. So just to recap, as I said, you know, within 10 minutes, this is fairly very um, kind of speedy um, summary of what is Kendo UI. Uh, we have something for everyone. So if you are an open source geek and then you want to make use of Kendo UI, we have Kendo UI Core which will provide you application framework, the web, mobile, and completely free. Uh, of course, this is GPL v3. It's not like a, sorry, uh, it's a, uh, an Apache license. And then um, you can use it for your personal or a commercial, no uh, strings attached. So Kendo UI core is free. Whereas when it comes to professional development, like an enterprise, and then you need a, um, 
you know advanced widgets like grid or pivot grid or gantt and all those things we have kendo ui professional which is a enterprise ui licensed per developer and then we provide support and maintenance whereas in kendo ui code you do not get any support from our side but if, if you have a kendo ui professional license we will support you in terms of uh, tickets you know all those things now coming to the excel export so what i showed you till now I and mean, what i uh, talked about till now is about the kendo ui as a framework right so uh, I'm not going to get into creating a controller or anything. Uh, there we have already done a lot of webinars. Uh, you know, if you go to tellerikelper.net and then uh, search for Kendo UI, you will get a lot of webinar videos uh, where I talk in depth about what is Kendo UI, how do I get started with Kendo UI, how do I create a control with Kendo UI. Today, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking more in terms of the framework level feature that we added, which lets you create uh, Excel documents on the fly on your browser I'm not talking about server side I'm talking about client side you know with a button click I can create an Excel right there in the browser and then uh, save the Excel file on the clients machine on, on, on somebody's machine okay so what we do is uh, we can create uh, Excel documents in JavaScript and then we can save on the client machine and we need one ex uh, one specific thing. Uh, it's known as JS Zip. Uh, you know, I'll put a, a link out to this particular library. Uh, if you download Kendo UI, uh, we should be packaging this with ours. Otherwise, JS Zip is available as a uh, open source library on GitHub. So we need JS Zip so that we can zip the contents of the uh, file, and it is supported by all uh, modern browsers. Uh, basically this is like an HTML5 feature because we use the file API to actually go and then say hey save the file otherwise you know it's a sandbox and you're not allowed to touch anything on the on the mission but what we do is we use a make use of that so that's why I'm saying like it is supported by all modern browsers which uh, have HTML5 file support for older browsers what we do is we have a mechanism wherein we can actually post the whole files content as a base 64 string all you need to do is provide us an endpoint wherein we can post the data and on the server side you take the base64 string and then convert it into a byte array and then push it out as a file so that's as simple as it can get so this is pretty much the basics of uh, the uh, Excel so how do you create an Excel document on the client side well it is simple we have an object called as OOXML or open office XML uh, we provide that API for you so of course when it comes to an Excel sheet it's all about a workbook right you know you call it Excel sheet but internally the way the object model is defined is there is a workbook workbook contains sheets sheets contains rows rows contain cells as simple as it can get so we have in Kendo a OOXML uh, object and then OOXML workbook object all you need to do is create a OOXML workbook object and uh, the workbook will have a sheets array so create a sheet and then inside the sheet you can create rows and inside the row you can create a cells so and then what you need to do is you need to call two data URL so this is a method that we provide on the workbook and you just say workbook dot two data URL and then the Excel file will be converted as a data URI and just call this kendo dot save as pass the data URI and then the Excel file will be Saved, saved on the system sorry so there are certain customization that you can do uh, whenever you're creating a cell you can actually go and then put uh, change the appearance of the cells for example the background the bold the color the font name font size horizontally should it be left aligned uh, italics underlined or uh, uh, v align all those things we also support you to freeze columns and rows using row split and then column split. You can just mention like you know row split one that means the first row is uh, freezed, column split one that means first row first column it will be freezed uh, like that. And then uh, you can set column width. You can say column span for each cell or a row span for each cell. And then you know these are some of the customization that we help uh, provide you. So now what we're going to do is we're going to see a demo of uh, this particular thing. What I'm doing is I'm going to be using, uh, just give me a second. So I'm going to be using, I'll say a new file and I'll say first demo.html. 
So what I'm going to do is move my script to the body. So here all I'm doing is uh, let me increase maybe a font size a little bit if you are not able to see. You should be able to see my Okay, so basically in order to work with Kindo UI, all you need is a couple of style sheets. As you can see here, we have kindo.common.min.css. We don't need the right to left. And then you need a theme CSS called default.min.css. Uh, you know, as of now, I do not need a data viz because I'm not doing any data viz, so I'll remove that. I don't need a mobile also. Um, and then so I will remove data viz and then mobile. So basically, I'll just keep the common and then default. And then when it comes to uh, the scripts, we need this many. So basically jQuery.min.js and then if you're working with Angular, you need an Angular. So I don't need Angular, I just keep it here because I'm not doing any Angular now. And then JS zip as I said uh, in order to for the export. And then I'm just using kendo.all. Uh, you don't need to use kendo.all. Oh, not able to see the screen. Uh, just give me a second, I'm not sure what is happening. Just give me a second. Ah, not sure why Guru Meeting is not showing my screen. I'm trying to share my screen again, so let me just uh, see what's happening. Okay, now my desktop is back, so let me see if I can get my code again. Okay, so we are able to see now. Yeah, not sure what happened with uh, go to meeting. It just went blank. Okay, so I have the jQuery, I have the Angular. I don't need an Angular as of now because I'm not working with the Angular, um, you know, integration. But I'll just keep it there. Just zip, and then Kendo or all. You don't need to use all. Usually in the demo, uh, we just put all uh, one fr uh, one file and then just use it. Otherwise, we have Kendo dot web dot min, Kendo dot mobile dot min, Kendo dot data viz dot min dot js. So you put whatever uh, you're uh, interested uh, with. So what I'm going to do now is just to uh, spice up a little bit, uh, I'll just put a couple of things. Uh, what I will do is uh, I'm going to bring in um, Bootstrap for the layouting. So I need Bootstrap. So I'll put up Bootstrap here. And I'm going to create a nav bar just to you know make it look neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create a nav bar here. And if you see here, uh, I'm just putting a nav bar. I'm just saying Excel export demo, and then I have a button called KBD and export. So let me save this, and then I'm going to say open in browser. And my browser is on my other window. Let me get it here. So allow blocked content, and we have our uh, button. So what I'm going to do is on clicking of the button I want to start generating uh, my uh, Excel sheet. So what I will do is I'll say script and it's a good practice to say like you know document dot ready. I always do a function. I don't do an anonymous function there. I will say function on ready and what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert that particular um, KBTN export to a Kendo button. So this is how you use uh, Kendo controls. So you just say dot Kendo and then a control name and then you will get that particular uh, this one. So I'll say click. I want to handle click event. So okay, button exposes a click event. I will say on export. And what I will do is I'll create another function. And I will say on export. And here, what I'm going to do is, just to make sure that everything is working, I will say alert, uh, export, clicked. 
and let's go back to the screen. Uh, somebody is asking what shortcut I use to create the script. Uh, this is basically this is uh, Sublime. Sublime is a very popular uh, editor, and then in Sublime there are certain snippets that uh, comes out of the box. So if you just type script and then tab, uh, it will auto complete that particular uh, you know uh, tag for you. So if I do an F5 now, you'll see like you know the button changes its color or whatever. If you see here, it was not. It's it's completely different. Uh, so if I click on export now, there you go. It, it I get a um, alert box which says export click. So now we're going to start creating a basic uh, workbook. So first thing that I want to do is where workbook equals. Um, what I have to do do is. So we need to create a new workbook. So I will say new kendo dot xml dot work book and it's going to take a couple of things now so now first first is a workbook contains a sheet so sheets is an array right so I will say here's the sheets array but I'm going to give I'm going to put only first sheet so I will say here is the first sheet so I will say I can give a title for the uh, you know kendo UI Excel uh, export demo this is the sheet name in fact uh, let, let's make let's cut it down so I will say uh, demo sheet that's the sheet name and then next what I need to do is I'm pretty much have to provide the columns that uh, it's gonna contain so basically this is used to set the widths of the column so basically I will say I will have uh, two columns for now just to you know prove the point and I will say so there are two columns and then now we need to define the rows for this so rows again is an uh, basically a n number of rows right so basically what I can do now is I can say I have one row now and then in the cells again it's an array so I will create uh, basically you keep on putting all the values uh, that you have so in the in the values what you can do is you can pretty much say whatever you want so let's say uh, I want to take um, ID and then I will say name so this is the first header column that we have and then I will have another row and I will say ID is one and I will say Abhishek Kant so he was the first employee of Telric India then I will have myself I was the second employee of Telric India then we have one more who is our account manager her name is Alka Jain so I'll just put those things so now we are done uh, with pretty much setting up our rows uh, and all those things so what what we need to do now is that's it so we defined the workbook for for our purpose and then next important thing that we need to do is just call kendo dot save as and provide some instructions how this needs to be saved as so I have to say the data URI for saving is actually remember I talked about uh, workbook dot to data URL off so you just calling a data URI it's a base64 string and then I can actually say what name I want to uh, do this I can say Telerik India employee list dot XLSX and that's it so that's all it takes to create a uh, you know a XML file on the client side so now let's go back to my browser I'm refreshing my browser So now the file is refreshed. I'm going to click on export. And I'm not sure you guys can see my bottom of the, okay, let me zoom. Let me bring up my zoom it. I forgot to get my zoom it so that I can zoom and then show it to you. So if you see my screen or if you see my um, bottom of my screen, uh, I'm, I'm now trying to zoom in. So what you see here is, you know, it is saying, hey, do you want to save Telric India employee list.xls? 
from this particular computer. So I'm getting the save and then cancel button. So now what, what it is saying is, hey, I have an Excel sheet. Do you want to save it? So I'm going to say save and then I will say open. So now I have saved it. Now I'm trying to open my Excel, Excel document now. And what we should see is, voila, so there it is. See this first column, this was the ID, the second column is the name, and then I had put up three names, so I'm getting all the three names here. That was a poor drawing from my side, but yeah, you can see like, you know, I have three names coming up. So this is uh, interesting. So now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take this to a next level. Uh, what I've already done is I've created a product um, a list. Please focus on the script to save Excel sheet. Okay, so there you go. Let me show you that script. So Kendo has this uh, a method, or, or, uh, a method called a save as. So all you need to do is provide a base64 string of the data that you want to put it into the Excel sheet and then give it a file name and then it will automatically go invoke the file API and then save this uh, document. So all I am doing is the workbook supports this particular uh, API called as two data URL. What it is doing is it's converting the whole, um, you know, the, uh, the object hierarchy into uh, a data URI, the base64 data URI and then giving it to the, uh, you know, Kendo save as method and then does a file name. It's basically a simple 60, base64 string being, you know, uh, done into a zip and then uh, we're going to go and then create an Office XML format. That's all it takes and then of course what I'm trying to showcase here is you as a developer do not have to do anything except call these two things and now you saw me writing all these things like rows, uh, all those things. So that's typically is not what you will do in a day-to-day -day scenario. The day-to-day -day scenario may be, I have a JavaScript array that I'm holding and then I want to convert this into an Excel sheet maybe, right? So what I've done is, I've already gone ahead and prepared a Northwind product, uh, you know, into a JavaScript file. Uh, maybe assume you're getting this from a service or whatever and then holding it in an array and then you want to export it, whatever. For the demo purpose, I have this Excel file. I'm going to go ahead and then put this Excel file, reference this Excel file here. So I will say script. SRC is equal to products.js. So now on the same export click, what I'm going to do is first I will go and then prepare my columns uh, or my rows. So the rows are typically, uh, basically what I'm going to do is, so I'm saying, hey, uh, and here is the uh, some of the other things that I'm going to showcase now. I'm going to be showcasing the concept of, um, you know, you have a cell and then you want to uh, customize that cell. So I created the row. The first row of that particular document needs to be the header row. So what I've done is I've created all the cells here for the first row and then I've given bold, true, background is uh, black and then color is uh, uh, white, that is foreground is white. So I've, cre I've created all these things. Now in the products, I have this products array, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through this products array and just give me a second. So what I'm doing is I'm going to loop through this uh, products array. If you see here, I'm doing for counter is equal to zero, counter less than products dot length, counter plus plus, and then I'm pushing or I'm adding uh, a cells or an object into this rows uh, array. All I'm doing is I'm saying cells value and then get the value and then convert that into that. And then what I'm going to do is in the workbook, in the sheets, in the rows, so in the columns, uh, I would have to add that many columns as uh, I have it in my rows. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows. So I will say one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll say this many columns and then I'm said auto width is equal to true. In the row section, all I have to do is I just have to say, remember I created this rows array here. So I can just come back here and then say rows is equal to rows and that's it. Now everything works the same, but when we export the document, I will see the complete uh, products in my Excel sheet. So let me go ahead to my browser. I'm going to refresh my browser. Uh, somebody is asking what is the role of jzip library. So basically jzip is used to zip the content or basically we are trying to uh, compress the document that's going to come out otherwise it's going to be a little bit uh, uh, in a, uh, huge in terms of the size. If I use a jzip, I'm zipping or I'm, I'm compressing the content. 
So now when I click on export, uh, it still says Telerik India employee. So let's go ahead and then uh, change that. I'm going to say Northwind products list or 2015 products, Northwind products, 20, I'll just say list. So that's the name of the document. And I'm going to go refresh the browser again. And I'm refreshed. I'm going to click on export. And now if you see here, it is saying Northwind product list. And then I can go ahead and save it now. And I will open that. Now I'm opening my Excel sheet. There you go. So I had 77 products. And then all 77 products have come out. Uh, into this Excel sheet very neatly and then notice what has happened to the first row. The first row I had said the background color should be uh, black and the foreground should be white and uh, so if let's take a look at what we had said. So we had said bold true background black color foreground is white and then that's what it has done. It has done a bold everything and all the data have come back and then this is how you can pretty much create um, you know a quick Excel export. So uh, hold on to your thoughts. You may be thinking why I have to do all this much if I have a grid. So we'll come back to that. So let's move ahead with my um, slide deck. Oh, where did it go? Uh, we were at PDF export, I believe. And then we finished Excel export. So we're going to now look at uh, PDF export. So the PDF export is pretty interesting. You know, what we, how we allow you to do PDF export is using our Kendo UI drawing API. Uh, one of the framework level, uh, you know, uh, the API that you get is drawing. And then what, what this does is this Kendo UI drawing is a cross-browser vector graphics library. So you can, you will basically create your scene tree. We call it as a scene tree. In the scene tree, what you have is a group and then in the group, you'll create your paths, you'll create your images, you'll create your text and we will represent this uh, scene tree or the group as a drawing as a drawing surface of SVG or a canvas on the screen or off the screen. So basically in memory also we will represent that as a SVG or a canvas depending on the browser. If the browser supports SVG we take SVG, if not we take canvas and then put everything on the canvas. And then of course uh, since you, it's a canvas or uh, SVG you can always show it on the screen uh, or uh, we can, uh, you know, pretty much in memory, we can take it and then uh, export that to a uh, particular thing. So in the interest of the time, I've already gone ahead and then created something. So let me show you what I have done. So what we have done here is basically I have a uh, export button same. And on click of that, I'm calling an export. So this is how typically a drawing uh, API is used. Uh, for example, I'm saying I want a Kendo drawing, and then I want a geometry, and then I said create a group. So this is, remember in the slide I showed, like you know, the group, the scene tree. That's the one which keeps everything. So I create a group, and then what I do is I create a circle geometry by saying like, hey, here is the uh, you know the coordinates, the radius, and all those things, and then these are the typical. Uh, geometry based or the graphic based uh, uh, thing. Uh, Somebody is asking can I export chart pivot? Just hang on for a while. I have a demo where I showcase a very extended uh, demo on that. So just hang on for that. So I create a circle geometry and then I create a circle by providing that geometry and then I append that to the group. So basically remember this particular uh, 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 the picture or the, the block diagram here. So group is where which contains everything of your uh, scene. So I just created a circle, appended that to the uh, group, and then I created a text, and then I again append that to the group. So now my group is nothing but my scene, uh, and then I'm setting certain options on the group itself, saying like, hey, uh, here is a PDF option. So we support uh, one of the property is PDF uh, on the group itself. So I'm saying my paper size is A4, and then I want these uh, margins on the left, top, right, bottom. And then again, take a look at how easy it is to uh, generate a PDF out of this. I will say drawing.pdf.save as, and I'm passing the group, and then I've given, I've given it a name, the file name.pdf, so I can say like, you know, PDF export demo file. And then I don't want any uh, server-side proxy URL if, uh, you know, the browser doesn't support it. And then I'm just saying, uh, when the, when the uh, export is done, I'm passing a callback uh, saying like, hey, uh, 
you know, just uh, alert me saying like export is finished. So now let's go and then see this in action. So I'm going to go and then say PDF export.html. So if you see here my screen, it says PDF export demo. And I'm going to click on export now. And there are a couple of things happening here. So I have a alert coming up and also I see do you want to save PDF export demo dot PDF so that means the file has been exported actually so let me go and then save and now I'm opening my PDF well it's not a fancy PDF document what we did was we wrote a circle that's the red circle that you see uh, on the top and then we wrote a text hello world so that's what you see here the hello world so basically what has happened is it has been able to you know notice the file name here it says pdf export demo so i have downloaded the pdf and then it's been downloaded to the exported and then downloaded to the machine so this is as simple as it can get when it comes to um, uh, doing a pdf export now i'm going to show you uh, another interesting aspect of the uh, pdf export I went ahead and then created something called a dashboard. Uh, let me run this dashboard first for you guys. Uh, I need a full screen now. So basically what I've done is I've gone to Northwind and then I got all the data, uh, you know, in terms of who are my top five performing salesperson. Uh, I don't know why this pie chart is not coming up. Let me see. Oh, now the full pie chart is gone. So no, no, don't worry, but when we export it, it's going to be there. So all I have done is I've used all aspects of Kendo UI here. So what you see here as a table is actually a Kendo UI grid. Uh, this is the grid. I'm showing top five performing agents. Uh, I have sales amount in USD, yearly sales distribution, quarterly sales distribution. So top five salesperson, quarter three, they made this many thousand USD, this many uh, thousand USD in the Q4. So totally this salesperson has done this. So that's just the, uh, you know, some uh, dashboard metrics for maybe a management. And here is how it is showing how we did in Q3, how, it is do, how he has done it in Q4. Similarly, who, which are the top five performing stores for me, for my uh, so this is all coming from a database called Northwind and Northwind is a fictitious uh, trading house which has uh, products, categories and then salesperson they sell their products uh, you know uh, uh, through their store. So now what I want to do is see this export button here on clicking of this export I want this whole stuff whatever you're seeing here till here to be exported as a PDF document so that I can send it to somebody right. Uh, just assume how difficult it would be for you guys to do it if assume there is no Kendo UI assume you have not heard of this export called PDF or anything I'll give you a second maybe a 5 seconds to 10 seconds how would you do this to export to PDF just go back think whatever you have assume the requirement is this your client comes here and then says hey I want this exported to PDF what do you do how do you do it okay and now I'm seeing like you know people are saying okay I will do this in SSRS okay so uh, think about the number of uh, uh, like you know what I'm trying to come at is um, the effort that you would need to do through SSRS will create image oh you are still in a um, web 1.0 era images are gone you know you you don't use images anymore for these graphs charts or anything what I'm asking is I want this to be exported as a PDF not as an image right that's the that's the basic thing so that I can send it to somebody the PDF are smaller in size and all those things HTML helper convert HTML to PDF. Well, I'm not sure HTML helper if you have it already or if you have some third party also, it's not easy to you know get as is. I want it as is, the same colors, the same uh, things coming up. Well, let's not spend much time. I'll, I'm going to showcase to you how this is done. So basically, what I've done is I have named or I've given a class called container. So it can be an ID or a class or whatever. Uh, it's up to you. So the way our Kendo UI drawing works is it takes any HTML and then converts that into a drawing, right? So take a look at what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm doing Kendo, uh, let me just format this. So all I'm doing is I'm saying Kendo drawing, draw DOM, and then I've given this particular uh, selector. So what it is doing is it's preparing the DOM as a group. Now, it, it, because as I told you, 
the Kendo drawing uh, makes use of the group uh, the, in order to make sure that you know we have a uh, drawing surface like SVG or a canvas and then on that drawing surface the whole group uh, tree will be drawn onto that particular uh, drawing surface. So I need now whatever you see on the HTML is still a draw, uh, so it's still a DOM. So I need to convert that into my group. So we give you this functionality wherein if you give me any HTML element and then ask, uh, ask that to convert that into a uh, you know a group will do that automatically so what we are doing is we took that particular element and then we converted that into what we call as a group and then I'm I'm having a promise here so I'm saying like when you're done execute this so here what I'm doing is I'm creating the export PDF here is the group the paper size is auto margin is blah 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 when that export is done I want you to save that to a, a local so this is a proxy URL. If my browser does not support, we have a, a small service that we have written wherein basically it accepts uh, a base64 string and then sends out again a uh, file API or a file result. So let me go through that again. I'm calling drawing the drawdom and then providing an HTML element. In my case, the container is nothing but the guy who is holding everything. If you see here, this is the container and it contains the whole um, uh, images, uh, this is the graphs, the chart, everything. And then what I do is I take that group, uh, we need the, the draw DOM converts the HTML element into group and then that group is nothing but it contains a path, text, image, everything. And then I say take that group and then export it into PDF and then export it like this, page size, margin and all those things. When the export is done, I want, to be, I want it to be saved on my machine. So I'm saying, hey, here is the data URI and the file name is sales dashboard.pdf. Let's go ahead and then click on the export button and then see what happens. So I'm, now I'm back to my browser and I'm going to click on export and there you go. So now if you see my bottom here, uh, the my browser's toolbar, so it's saying sales dashboard.pdf. So basically we have now exported the whole uh, whatever dashboard that we have into a uh, PDF so let me click on save and then now I'm going to click on open and there you go so this is now a PDF document with the whole whatever UI that I have been trying to do it's coming as is you know it's coming exclusively as is whatever you saw on the HTML and crispier also so that's the power of our Kendo UI that we give it to you uh, you want to export in PDF or whatever you want to do, so we give you that particular power. So if you think I'm bluffing, i am done a right click on my system. My PC is running Windows 8, so if you see here on the top, it is showing you like this is a PDF document. Here you go. So I'm not bluffing, so I'm actually opening up a PDF document on my machine, and this is how the PDF document uh, looks like, right? So if you see here, it has everything. Whatever you needed, it has everything. You can now give this particular PDF document to anybody uh, who wants to take a look at it. So that's about, um, you know, in terms of Excel exporting and then uh, PDF export. Uh, same thing for Excel is not possible because, you know, uh, this is a drawing with Excel. You cannot draw. Rather, you've got to pretty much uh, do a rows and cells. At this moment, the only thing that you can do with our Excel export is whatever I showed you. So basically you can create a row, you can create a cell, you can style the cell, uh, you can use the open office XML formatting uh, mechanisms to format your cells, uh, write a formula and you know, all those things. So that's the only thing that you can do. Uh, maybe we'll add more support in the, in, in the future. As I said, this was released just uh, in our uh, recent release and it still has a long way to go. So now coming back to, so that's about the PDF export and then we'll see export from data grid. So you know what application is without a data grid, right? So basically in our Kendo UI grids, what we have is out of the box support. Basically it supports Excel and PDF uh, export. Uh, you get a toolbar command which says uh, Excel or PDF. You just put the uh, commands known as Excel or PDF and then that's it. You, write, you don't write any code. The grid will automatically do that. And uh, you can also do a programmatic invocation, meaning we give you save as Excel and save as PDF on the grid itself. And you can customize the Excel um, file that are generated 
uh, using the customization the, through the events. We give you an event where we say, hey, we are exporting now into an Excel. Do you want to come in and then do something? So let me show you uh, a demo of this. Um, just give me a second. I'm just trying to open up my demo. So what I had done was, you know, I just wanted to showcase even the fact that, you know, you do not have to install anything in order to work with uh, Kendo UI. We have something called as Dojo or uh, it's known as a Telerik Playground, you know, we call it as Telerik Kendo UI Dojo. So it's dojo.telerik.com. When you come in here, you pretty much have everything set up. You just write the code and on the right hand side you will see the output. So you typically have to, you don't have to install anything. Let's say I'm trying to evaluate something in Kendo UI if that scenario works or not. Well, there you go. So you just come in here, uh, start creating your scenarios and then uh, give it a spin uh, and see if uh, Kendo UI can meet. So what I'm going to do is I had already created a couple of uh, snippets. One of the snippets where I showcase this uh, Kendo UI data grid export. So let me try to bring it up. Uh, local grid. There you go. So I have it here. So what I'm going to do is uh, basically let me run this first. And then I'll, I'll explain you what I'm doing. So this is a grid, and grid has uh, like you know eight rows of data, eight pages of data, uh, totally 77 uh, items. And uh, the way, so without writing any code, the way you can do it is first you just have to go and then uh, put this toolbar, uh, you know, enable this toolbar. So this toolbar has certain keywords like Excel and then has a keyword called PDF. That's it. If you want the grid data to be ex exported to Excel, just put the, uh, put the Excel there. If you want the grid's data to be exported to PDF, just put the PDF there, and then that's it. You don't write any other code except enabling this toolbar. And uh, what you see here on the uh, bottom here, uh, in the this one called as Excel and PDF, is actually certain options. So I'm saying, Hey, whenever the file is getting exported as Excel, I want you to use these settings. So what I'm saying is, I want all the pages to be exported. I want the, uh, when the Excel sheet is generated, I want each row headers to be filterable. You know, basically I want an Excel filter on each uh, row. And then I want the name to be Northwind product list .xls. And then when, I'm, when you are exporting this to PDF, so we provide you this many options author, creator, which date it was created, what is the file name, what is the keyword, landscape is true or false. Uh, if you set landscape to false, it's going to be uh, portrait. And then here's the margin, paper size, subject, title, proxy URL. And that's it. So now when I click on export to Excel, notice what happens. So here it is. I have the product list dot Excel coming up. And then let me click on that. Uh, I mean, I'll save on that and then open it. So let's give it a couple of seconds. The Excel is opening now. And there you go. So the whole uh, grid data has been exported. And what, what the filterable does is, if you notice here, we have this filters on each column. So that's what filterable does. You know, can I filter? So if I do this, the Excel's filter will come into picture. Now let's try to export the same thing with uh, export to PDF. So I'm clicking on export to PDF. And here is the PDF generated. You know, is Northwind product list dot PDF. So I'll say open. And we have a problem. So here, what happens is when you export PDF, the grid to a PDF, it's basically what it is doing is it always will export. I mean, I have set it to export only the current uh, whatever is visible. And then notice the toolbars are also coming up. The export to Excel and then export to PDF, the toolbars are also coming up uh, in the PDF. Well, this is not that something that I want in my Excel, in, in my PDF export, right? So let's set it right. 
if you go the route of this uh, toolbar it is what it is trying to do is it is converting this whole grid container or the grid element into a group you know remember I talked about the scene uh, the graphics group or a graphics scene so it's creating that scene and then uh, so even the controls are uh, kind of uh, rendered on the screen well I don't need that what I want is I want just the grid to be exported and then I don't want this whole button and other thing so what we give you is remember I talked about um, exporting through programmatic invocation so basically I give you two uh, functions on the grid itself so I have placed an external buttons just below the grid you know um, export to Excel and then export to PDF and all I'm going to do now is I'll comment out this uh, toolbar because I don't want the toolbar to be there otherwise the whole toolbar will be uh, rend you know kind of um, uh, exported into my PDF so now if you see I don't have a toolbar now I'm going to click on this export PDF. So in the export PDF function, all I'm doing is at runtime, I grab the HTML element, get Kendo Grid out of it, and then Kendo Grid has this method called save as PDF or save as Excel. Just I just have to call that, and then I will have that uh, particular. Now let me go and then do an export to PDF. Now it has created the PDF. I'm going to open it now. and there you go the grid is now exported to PDF but I don't see any other things now so of course I should have um, made sure that you know either I set it to landscape so that if you see there uh, my third column fourth column these are all cut off because it, it's up to you uh, it's up to your due diligence for example if I have a grid of 10 columns can it fit in a portrait mode it cannot right so you just have to make the page turn to a landscape or you know all those things so all those customization would have to be done but my idea here was to showcase like you know we give you out of the box this support without you doing uh, much work at all so that's pretty much what we had in terms of uh, today's webinar um, that's something that I wanted to showcase and then let you guys know that hey Kendo UI is cool uh, try this out and then these are some of the things that you can pretty much uh, uh, take a um, you know support in, t in terms of your project or anything if you ever needed something to be done uh, mind you this is actually a core framework level uh, you know API so it doesn't matter whether you have Kendo UI core or whether you have Kendo UI professional it's available in both so what I'm trying to say is even in open source version of Kendo UI which is Kendo UI core you get this benefit so go around uh, go ahead download and then play around with uh, Kendo UI and uh, thank you very much for uh, you know being so patient with uh, with, our, with us today in this webinar and i'm going to be stopping the recording now and then uh, take questions uh, 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 post the uh, recording here so thank you very much for each one of you uh, for attending this webinar today